हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम बैक लेट इस कैरी फॉरवर्ड द सेम चैप्टर नेचुरल रिसोर्सेज इन आर प्रीवियस क्लास वी स्टडीड अबाउट टू ए बायोटिक कॉम्पोनेंट ऑफ द बायो द होल बायोस्फियर दैट इज योर एयर एंड सॉइल ओके एंड वी इवन स्टडीड इट्स कंपोजिशन वी इवन स्टडीड द लेयर्स ऑफ द बोथ एंड वी स्टडीड हाउ इट गेट्स पल्यूटेड एंड हाउ आर द वॉट आर द इफेक्ट्स ऑफ इट्स पल्यूशन okay then now today we'll start with the third abiotic component and that is nothing but water okay now when i said told you air i told it is the breath of the life same way water is known as the wonder liquid okay as we studied the first three first two the third one will also be the same we'll study the composition then how it gets polluted and then what are the effects of its pollution okay now water is known as a wonder liquid why because it is the universal solvent as well as there is so many number of organism which can survive in it or as well as because of it we all are organism we all survive because of water okay we need water to drink daily or to do all the work right same way we have number of organism which stays inside the water also now if i see the composition we all know that the three fourth of the earth surface is covered with water right this is the thing which we have studied in our earlier classes but from that water 97.5 percentage is in the form of sea water okay so this sea water we all cannot consume so from this 2.5 which is remaining is in the form of fresh water okay and from this 2.5 which is in the form of fresh water we have 2 percentage which is locked in the form of ice and glaciers that's why again it cannot be consumed and we have only 0.5 percentage as your ground water okay so this is the only percentage of water which we can consume so out of the whole 100 percentage of water that is 3/4 of the earth surface which is covered with water we have 97.5 percentage as sea water and 2.5 percentage as fresh water 2 percentage of this fresh water is locked up locked up in the form of ice and glaciers that's why we cannot use it and then we have only 0.5 percent as ground water which we actually use for drinking we use for washing we use for all the activities which we want to do even the plant takes up the same water okay so this is the ground water or this is the way the water flows occur okay that is 97.5 which is a sea water we cannot take then out of 2.5 the 2 percentage again it is locked up in form of ice and glacier so we cannot use so you we use only 0.5 percentage of this ground water right now this water from where do it come it comes from the earth only the earth already have that 3/4 percentage is covered with water apart from it we also have rains okay which are a form of again refilling that water surface and how do are this rain forms the rain are formed because of the same water it goes up in the form of the water vapor and then it comes out down okay in the form of rain okay now this rains can even be stored why it can be stored because this even the ice and glaciers even the water from the sea water is getting evaporated so it is the way by which i can increase the ground water level okay so the storing of the rain water is known as rain water harvesting okay it is called as rain water harvesting and generally this rain water is harvested in big tank but apart from this the rain water can also be harvested from the places where it is getting accumulated more so what has happened there are canals which is being made up and the canals then come and joins to a big tank where the rain water can be harvested even nowadays we are having roof top okay from the roof top whatever water is coming out it is also getting harvested from the rain whatever rain falls on the roof top it is getting harvested or stored in the tanks okay so there are different ways by which we can do rain water harvesting and what will it help in it will help in the conservation of water as well as it will help to use the same water when the amount of water is less in the particular area as we all know that the ground water is already low 
the amount of water which we have to be used is already less so you can do rain water harvesting because along with the water vapors which are being found it is not only formed from the ground water but also from ice and glaciers also from sea water so it will help us to get hold of the water in the time when we are not having excess amount of rains okay so this rain water harvesting once it is stored it can again be used when there is less rain or when there is shortage of water okay now let us see how the water gets polluted the water pollution can either be physical chemical or biological when i say physical it is due to heat and oil spills okay we all know that the huge tanks and the ships which consist of oil sometime if there is a leakage in that ship the oil gets spilled in that water so that is the way the oil the water gets polluted the other is heat okay whenever there is excess amount of heat the water will expand so what will happen is the atmospheric gases will get dissolved in this water and as a result the gases the greenhouse gases which we studied in air pollution will affect this water or pollute the water so that is the physical way by which the water gets polluted that is either heat or oil spills apart from this the chemical ways by which it gets polluted is your use of fertilizers by industries by soaps and detergents and improper drainage okay now fertilizer we all know that excess amount of fertilizer will first pollute the soil okay now if it is sprayed in the form of aerosols then it even pollutes the air now when the soil takes in water okay the fertilizers goes in an excess amount of fertilizer moves through the water body along with the ground water and it causes leaching we have studied leaching in our previous chapters what is leaching when the excess amount of fertilizer along with the ground water moves through the water reservoirs so that causes leaching therefore it is a chemical way by which the water gets polluted industries release untreated sewage in the water okay or untreated chemical which are released in the water again causes water pollution then we have soaps and detergent there are few places where the clothes and the utensils and everything has been washed near the water bodies so even that is polluting the water and we have the drainage system if the drainage is not proper so i can add over here improper drainage or even the drain uh, water which is not properly treated and then added into the water body then again it will cause the water pollution along with it we have biological things which even causes water pollution like your bacteria virus or i can write in short microorganisms all the microorganism even causes water pollution okay this how does they cause water pollution now these all are generally present in your improper drainage system or the sewage water so the sewage water if it gets mixed with this water actual water resource so what will happen the sewage water will consist of all the bacteria which is present in the fecal matter of the humans so this bacteria and viruses will get mixed with the water and as a result it will get, cause the pollution so there are three ways by which water can get polluted physical ways that is heat or oil spill then we have chemical ways use of excess use of fertilizers industrial throwing untreated water then we have soaps and detergents if you are washing clothes and utensils or the animals near the water places or improper drainage or sewage which is untreated and then send into the water same way because of this untreated sewage the bacteria and the viruses present in the fecal matter get mixed with the water okay so that causes your water pollution now let us see the effects now what will be the effects if the water is polluted the first effect will be the disease if we consume such a polluted water then we will get different types of disease generally diarrhea jaundice the water borne diseases or the diseases which are due to the consumption of the water which is untreated will be passed from the water to us okay so the effects first will be water 
bond disease okay this is if the untreated or the polluted water we are directly consuming but apart from it even the aquatic plant and animal gets affected okay this untreated water even affects the animals and plants we have one more thing which we have studied in our lower classes that is eutrophication okay this is generally what is eutrophication it is excess growth excess growth of algae on the layer of water okay how it is growth because of this pollution okay this chemicals and the fertilizers and all the extra things bring about too much minerals and vitamins to the or the chemicals brings about too much amount of ele elements into the water this elements can be easily taken up as a food by algae okay and they will grow in n number they will grow too much and as a result they will form a huge layer on the water surface so when the algae grows on the water surface what happens is the aquatic plants and animals are able to survive why because this sunlight is able to go the water is having the oxygen so it takes the oxygen from the water and the sunlight for preparing the food they get from the sun directly but this eutrophication excess growth of algae do not allow the sunlight to move in as a result the plant will not grow so if the plants of the aquatic plants will not grow the fishes which survive on this aquatic plant will also die so that is eutrophication and this eutrophication or this moving of fertilizers into the plant body suppose this fertilizer is only taken as the nutrition by the plant so what will happen this fertilizer from the plant aquatic plant will go to the fish right if the fish consumes the plant this fishes are consumed by whom we consume it right so what happens is from the fish a little amount of that fertilizer or the chemical will enter our body okay we all know that our food chain have different tropic levels right we have the producer that are the plants then we have the consumer primary consumer that are the herbivorous animal then we have the this is the primary consumer then is the secondary consumer that are the carnivorous and then we have the tertiary consumer or the ones which are biodegraders okay so these are each tropic level now suppose this fertilizer or the chemical enters the producer it will enter then to the primary consumer from primary consumer it will go to the secondary consumer and from that to the tertiary consumer right so this process by which the non biodegradable things enters each tropic level in high amount is known as biomagnification okay you will study about this biomagnification in more detail in class 10 but since we are studying this water as the resource and what are the effects i am explaining you about the biomagnification whether non biodegradable matter okay is getting increased at each tropic level from the producer it will go to the consumer from con primary consumer to secondary and to tertiary so that process of increasing of the non biodegradable substance in each tropic level is known as biomagnification this is all about water okay let us recapitulate what we studied we studied how the water is distributed throughout 97.5% is sea water 2.5% is fresh water but out of that 2% is locked up locked up in the form of ice and glacier 0.5 is then available for us as ground water but we need to save more so for that saving we can do rain water harvesting okay it can be either simple tank or you take the rain water from the roof or you take the rain water where it is getting accumulated you are having a canal and then the canal or the tubes are getting connected to a tank which you can use where there is less or water shortage then we saw how the water gets polluted it can be either physical that is through heat and oil oil spills chemical through fertilizers industries soaps and detergent and improper drainage or sewage then biological through this bacteria virus and microorganism how this will enter the water because of the sewage if the sewage on the industrial things are untreated then it will enter the water okay and these are the effects you can have a water borne disease if you consume the water directly even it will affect the aquatic plants and animals sometime if the layer or the amount of fertilizers are too much then what happens is there is a excess growth of algae 
and this algae do not allow the sunlight to penetrate. So what happens when the sunlight cannot penetrate? The aquatic animals and the plants will not be able to survive because plants need sunlight for their growth. And as a result, the plant will not grow, so the herbivores will get killed. Okay? And sometime what happens is this fertilizers are taken up or get absorbed by the plant. In that case, it gets increased in each tropic level and consumption or presence of this non-biodegradable substances at each tropic level, increasing of this non-biodegradable substances at each tropic level is known as biomagnification. In the next class, we will study about the biotic things. Okay? We will actually study how this abiotic things interact with the biotic components with the help of your biogeochemical cycles. Okay, we will study different types of cycle which helps us to take that particular thing in the atmosphere, then how it is getting circulated in the whole biotic thing and then again it comes back to the atmosphere. Thank you. Hope this video increased your knowledge. For more such videos and a completely free educational content, log on to www.epathshala.org or visit our Epathshala YouTube channel. We have each and every question solved for maths, physics, chemistry and biology. So subscribe our channel, share with your friends, like our Facebook page and follow our Twitter handle for regular updates and important educational tips and also win Epathshala goodies. So what are you waiting for? Subscribe this channel and enjoy the freedom of education.